Ja, hallo, liebe Zuschauerinnen und Zuschauer, dear colleagues, hello and welcome. I have to switch to English back because we are talking in English. Uh, my guest today for our 23rd episode is Jan Schönemann from Germany. So I was switching back to German because of uh, our introductory speak we had. So hello and welcome, Jan. So for all of, for all of the viewers out there who don't know you, you might introduce yourself but i make a small introduction so uh, you're you're about from the same generation i am so we started our so i think we started our journey in analog photography in computer without the internet so it's like our children who ask me all the times daddy what what was your favorite video game <laughs> to tell them there was no video game when i was at your age so We had, we had the, I, I think we had the pleasure to be or to see the development of a new era. So from the 80s, from the disco where we were dancing to the 90s. So the internet was born in 91. I had my first website in 94. So it's not a long time period, but a time period with a lot of amazing changes also in the dental field. Mm -hmm. And I, again, want to welcome Jan. And let's not only talk about the past, but only about the future mm -hmm. of dentistry and of dental technology. So welcome, Jan, and please introduce yourself. Yeah. Hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to have a talk to you guys. Never know who's there. Hopefully, there are some people which know me because I sent some invitations for uh, this evening. Uh, interesting uh, what you said about the computer thing, because I remember that was the time I was really upset with all this computer stuff coming up. And so, but I had to do my master degree and I had to make a, you know, a whole book of, you know, all the cases written. And I thought, okay, I have to buy a computer. I don't want to, but I have to. So let's get, get into it. And I spent hours and hours and hours and hours, you know, and this was, a, you know, a, a small computer, you know, even if not so powerful like, a, you know, a, a smartphone like today. So I was working on DOS level creating documents. So and today we even do not know how DOS, uh, DOS is working. So we have applications, blah, blah, blah. So this is, there's a lot of changes, the same like in, in dental field. To my person, I'm, yeah, as, as you said, I'm a dental technician. I'm based in Bielefeld. It's in the middle of, uh, middle west of Germany. I'm very close to Netherlands and 300 kilometers to Hamburg. So in the, quite in the middle. And um, I, from, from my history, I was born in Hamburg, so I switched to Bielefeld because this was here in Bielefeld. There was kind of a center of very high quality of uh, dentistry. So this is what was my passion as I start training. As I was 16, I know exactly in the moment I touched this dental field, this is my life. So I had from the beginning my passion and it's still there. Two uh, sections I'm working hard on it over the, my whole period of uh, being dental technician is uh, ceramic, of course. Uh, this is, uh, everybody is working with ceramic. If you, you know, see all these uh, beautiful pictures of uh, colleagues, which are amazing work presenting on Facebook or Instagram. There's a lot of good uh, ceramists, of course. But the second part where I, my heart belongs to is the denture part. So this is not so sen uh, sensational for a lot of people because, you know, everybody's looking for implants and this and that. But there are some toothless patients and they need, of course, help. And uh, so that's for me a big pleasure to help these people. Yeah, that's, uh, you will never have so much success with one lateral as with a nice total denture, for sure. So this, bring, this, this is an interesting topic because all the hype on smile design and mm -hmm. whatever we we see around here these days i always say look this is 
what we used to do or what you as as telling me that full dentures are your passion mm -hmm. doing a full denture is what digital smile design or smile design is all about so when i was a student we learned what is the most important part when doing a full denture mm -hmm. is the trying of the front teeth mm -hmm. that's the first step and this is when when you when you look back what we have read in our textbooks as students mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. 50s or yeah, uh, even yeah, yeah, yeah. before that. So putting the front teeth in the wax wall is the most important step. And mm -hmm. this is what we are doing now on the computer. Mm -hmm. So basically we are doing the same, what has been uh, the, or a lot of rules of dentistry, of dental technology have been established on patients without teeth. Because, because when uh, our grandparents or uh, older people... I 100% agree. percent agree, Alessandro. But I have to tell a joke about, you know, this stuff. Can you imagine if we both go to my city and, and the center and the marketplace, you know, because I told you, there is a machine and the patient put the head into the machine, they pay 15 euro and they come out with total restored teeth unbelievable you would say it's not possible because everybody has uh, totally different physiognomics and uh, phonetic etc etc and i will tell you yes before that's true means you understand after everybody is in the same level so with the computerized uh, dentistry i of course i work as well with this stuff this is not the point we have to, this is not the point, but for the denture side, for especially for the phonetic part, to implement the, this into uh, computerized uh, steps, this is not so easy, I would say. No, I, was just, I was just, I want, I just wanted to rem remind, especially young dentists or even dentists of our generation, yeah. that maybe they should take a look, and I did, I really mm -hmm. took the textbooks mm -hmm. of uh, of full dentures of the of the of the older generation of professors to relearn or to review what they have written, what they have experienced, what they have learned. So when I was a student, I we had Professor Palla, who was mm -hmm. who was the 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 first who also talked about aesthetics. Mm -hmm. in full dentures so he mm -hmm. did beautiful full dentures and brought the the aesthetic uh point also in in this so telling us why should a patient without teeth not have a beautiful smile yeah so yeah, because it, before it was just uh, uh chewing biting and uh, and and swallowing the food and then it changed also in the in the full denture business Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm pointing on this because mm -hmm. in uh, in many discussions with uh, CEOs or people from big companies like Ivoclar, Vita, GC, and and you can name all the companies, they always tell me that denture teeth are still an important business. And if I go to conferences, if I read articles, I don't see denture teeth. I only see veneers, implants, zirconia, whatever you want. But uh, it's very hard to find somebody. I know that there are. Don't yeah, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. A lot of people who are experts in uh, in in full dentures, in in occlusion, in uh, TMJ things. But it's not sexy. Yeah, I know what you mean. But you know, this is not this is not. True, because if they see this kind of stuff, what they never saw before, perhaps on on a, on a conference, this is my experience. What I have, they saw all this beautiful ceramic stuff, and I give the lecture with the dentures, and they are really blown up. It's, I'm not arrogant. I do not want to be arrogant or something. I know about these cases because I ask them, "What do you think? What is done here?" And they don't know. They do not see it. They advise maybe, okay, maybe veneers. No, no, it's plastic. But this is a good point, what you said, because we we should talk about how what is the future in dentistry, right? 
And uh, we are talking already about, you know, what is necessary to know, to have maybe a vision of the future, we have to know about the past. So you had said already about computerized dentistry and, you know, occlusion was one point and aesthetic was one point, etc. Some kind of wor uh, words, what you said. I have the same experience in all these um, and uh, courses what I did. So I was in the open time, let's say 140, 150 days out of home for giving uh, trainings. So as well, uh, trainings for dentures. So if what I saw, what I see is that people lose knowledge, especially the young generation, because the the focus is almost on machines, on you know PC work, designing, milling, fast, easy, a little bit of painting. That's it. But before you you know you are able to do that, you have to understand what you do and how these things working together. So if I ask the people, how far is the labial part of the central, far away from the middle of the papilla incisiva? And people are thinking, hmm, hmm, I don't, this should be coming out like, like a bullet out of a pistol because this is first year of training. So this is one critical uh, point, what I see that this generation coming up now losing a lot of these important parts and believe that machines will do it for them. So this is one thing what I think we should talk about, yeah, that there is a lot of education necessary. If it's online or live, whatever, it is very important to get deeper into this and not to believe completely in the industry machines. Yeah. The, prob the problem is, I think a dentist, in the future dentist, should also be a lab technician. Mm -hmm. But knowing that it's not easy to be dentist and lab technician at the same time, also for efficiency reasons. But theoretically, theoretically, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, theoretically, a dentist that is also a trained lab technician, theoretically, mm -hmm could do all the work, but practically it's not practical because it's not efficient enough. So it's, it makes sense. It makes sense that we have a, that, that we have the team of dentists and lab technician working together. But mm -hmm. what I want to uh, mention or what, what I want to highlight is I would love that more dentists would look what the lab technician is doing understanding or at least try to understand what the lab technician is doing. An example of my lab technician who's doing uh, my, my, all my, all my cat cam stuff that I'm not doing myself. I have a very young, talented lab mm -hmm. technician and he's doing an uh, awesome work. And mm -hmm. he tells me that some dentists after three, four years, the assistant calls the lab with the question, the patient asked what material the crown is that was cemented three years ago. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell us what material this was? And this is, this is really sad. This mm -hmm. is sad that, the, that a lot of dentists don't care. I know. Don't care. I know. What I know. I know. They just say, make me a full ceramic crown. Mm -hmm. They don't care what it is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. The lab technician can send Emacs, uh, yeah. Zirconia, whatever. So a lot of dentists don't care about the fluorescence of the restorations. So there's an ongoing discussion. I had the discussion with Sasha Panos, yeah, Javier, sure. the e-lab sure. e group. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of science around. But if you ask the dentists, they don't care about the fluorescence. They yeah, don't measure it. They don't visualize it. They just wait that maybe, or they hope that the, that, that the patient is not coming back complaining about the lack of Florence, fluorescence of a restoration. And I think these are the important things that dentists should be more lab technicians in the sense of learning about dental technology, learning about material science, 
Now I had last week an interview with, with Josef Kunkela, who made impressive statements about where we are with 3D print technology. Mm -hmm. I was really amazed where mm -hmm. we already are. I, I, mm -hmm. I told him, yeah, I tried these 3D printers and I was, for me, it was a little bit dirty and uh, mm -hmm. with this washing mm -hmm. and post curing, mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't see, I, do, I don't see that uh, this technology is ready to be used in the dental office. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I delegate this, but I, he changed my mind and mm -hmm. um, I have two milling machines. I, I used to have three milling machines in my office. Mm -hmm. One broke. And uh, now I have two, which is still enough. Mm -hmm. But now, instead of buying, again, a third milling machine, I'm really considering to buy a 3D printer instead of that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. How, do you, how do you see this? This is also an interesting part besides yeah. education. Yeah, yeah. There was uh, a question coming up. There was a question coming up uh, how I see my profession in the future. There are so, so many points come together. What? What yeah. I see, you know, because this is all about also the market, and the market is also includes also includes the dentist, the technicians, the industry, and the patient. Okay, so the patient is one of the biggest factor for me in my point of view. So it depends what the patient wants, you know, on which we had this before we start this uh, live conversation here we had just a little talk about this you know where where should the patient spend the money should they spend it in holidays in the car or in teeth or whatever it depends on the level how important this is for them so it's all about as well uh, about the influence from outside how they mention, oh, I want white teeth. Yeah, the white, okay, we are not in, in US, we are not here. We, are, we like to sell clean, bright teeth, let's say like that. As you come out from the dental hygienist, it's also a little bit about selling, but you only can be a good seller, a sell a high, high quality product, if you have inside the passion that you believe in what you do. If you only have on the first view your cash flow in the back, this patient will not pay a little bit more for the crown. So if they feel that you want to bring the best to them and they feel that it's inside of you, they even do not need a mirror to watch the case in the mouth. If they watch in your eyes, they see it, if you're satisfied or not. You know this as a dentist. Eh? You cannot lie with the eyes. This is not possible. So to the point where do I see the future? I, I see there is like in the social life, the decision is going out and out and out. One, one is the industry side, in industrial side, <clears throat> like the big companies, what they do now, there's a consolidation, there's so many companies where we, you know, catched from the big American companies. So that's like with the certification with the MDR, you know, they like to, to pull down the small companies with all the certification stuff because the small companies cannot pay that. So this will happen that the industry, and this is the goal of what they have, they want to produce everything. They want to sell the machines and they want to produce. They, you know, they don't want somebody else doing that because the, in, in, the machines can do that 36 hours a day because they sent the fire to India and from India to mm, 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 and so blah, blah, blah. Okay. But what they cannot do is they cannot have the patient decide to bring this little blue in the edge, this little crack inside there. This what we feel like passion, yeah? The central to the other central. So I think there is also a, a big chance to survive if we, you know, step further and a higher quality level.
And this is only possible if we having a good education, if we train us, not only the industry to get better software, to train us to get a better product at the end of the story in the mouth. This is what I think. So closer to the patient, closer to the dentist. And if we have now a big chance here, we have now COVID, everything is locked down. We have, uh, we have some digital possibilities to work in face to face and share pictures. Pictures are very important yeah, in the dialogue from, you know, from distance to distance. And we are so good with this, this computer stuff now that we can analyze a lot just by software and camera, if this is well done from both sides. So then it's also being close to the patient. And I see a lot of patients, so okay, I know they never talk about the price because they see how much you invest in, in, in your passion in time because they even don't know how much time it costs to, to build up a crown in ceramic. Yeah. No, so coming back to, to, the, to the several points you were highlighting. So first, mm -hmm. in the dental industry, we have a phase of consolidation. So we have bigger companies, so fewer companies, bigger companies, and all of them are now following the same strategy of being the one-step provider. Mm -hmm. So everybody is now getting into a liner business mm -hmm. and the aligner business includes not only the aligners. Then you say, okay, if the patient has straight teeth, he wants veneers, he mm -hmm. needs implants, he needs fillings, he needs uh, bleaching, he needs this, 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 this. And all companies are now competing. Mm -hmm. You name it, GC, Dentsply, Sirona, no. Strauman, no. uh, uh, I, I don't know all the companies, but all the, the big names are now competing and fighting also for the patients. Yeah. So, and it's interesting that I I don't see or I, I, I don't know what, what strategy towards patient and dentists of these companies are. So you don't, some years ago you had the representative coming to your office, talking to you. So this con this it's gone. You this is gone. Now. So we have online communication. We we get we get emails. We have webinars. We have a lot of advertisement of of these companies, and especially now the aligner business is going up uh, like like crazy, and mm -hmm. is sold also to the dentist as uh, as an additional thing which uh, if, if you can implement it in your office, is mm -hmm. not so bad. Uh, I don't know how it's in Germany or in other countries. Yeah, 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 in, yeah, Switzerland, yeah. in Switzerland, this is getting, a, this is getting huge. Yeah, and exactly. uh, and okay. a, lot of, a lot of companies are investing a lot of money also in marketing mm -hmm. of, of all this. And at the end, we have to watch, listen, and mm -hmm. adapt also our strategies of, of our dental offices. Mm -hmm. along also as uh, our strategies with our partners and lab technicians mm -hmm. are one of one of our partners so uh, in the discussion i had with michael appa and nazari so mm -hmm. her people yeah, yeah. that are very much into marketing so i i felt that marketing is getting more and more important in in dentistry and a lot of statements like patients will not go to the best dentist they will go to the ben to, to the dentist with the best marketing. And, yeah. uh, and this is a development we have to be aware of also with social media, with all this. So uh, you see you see that there's like a separation. different different dentists are working on different fields. The younger generation is using social media intensively mm -hmm. to communicate with their patients. So I, I tried this several years ago and I failed, maybe mm. because I was uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how to use it. But today I think uh, the younger generation and the younger patients together yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are, more, are more into digital communication and, uh, and this transformation has started. And marketing plays an important role. So if a young dentist opens up his new dental clinic, 
-hmm. he should invest also in marketing, in corporate identity and all this, and not just think, yeah, I'm the best dentist around, so people will come to my office because I'm the best. No. So um, this, is, this is, let's say, from my part, the downside of our profession, that we are also getting more commercialized. Yeah. So, uh, this we is have to be careful. We have to be careful, you know, not like that it's drifting in the way of Amazon. Like, you know, there is a dentist having five stars. He must be good. Never know where he gets the five stars from. You know what I mean? So, uh, again, also Nazari said this. I watched this. You know, he said also that this is uh, not only the part of the marketing, it's also the 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 passion, what I said already, the passion, what you have inside, you know, you transport that. And even maybe, okay, maybe it takes a little bit longer to get there because it's, you know, from mouth to mouth, people will talk. No, it's not because it doesn't hurt and he was so kind. No, he's, he, he, is, he has something in his hands. He, he, he He's caring about you not only about your teeth in general, I mean, okay, there can be a marketing tool, you know, after operation, call the patients two days later, is everything fine with you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is a kind also of marketing, but it should come from the heart, I mean, from the inside that you feel it. I mean, this is different, you know? Yeah. yeah. So no, this is this is this is something that all, all, all over all the interviews I have done so far, let's say the one the one common sense of all mm -hmm. interviews is passion, passion, passion for whatever you do. And this was the message of all the speakers from Pascal Magne to a uh, coachman to uh, yeah. to uh, all, all people I have uh, interviewed so far. So this was this was the key element also for the younger for the younger colleagues and not only for the younger colleagues for all of us. For sure. And, and you stated it as well. If the patient, our our customer, yeah. uh, feels that you're passionate about what you're doing, there's there's also almost no discussion about money. So the, it makes the whole process of communication and talking about what uh, what uh, yeah. dentists do not like to talk about money so no. i always uh, say <clears throat> dental assistants are more expensive in europe than in other countries if mm -hmm. i if 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 dental assistants would be a little bit cheaper i i i they own they i i really appreciate their effort in my in my office and in all other offices they are important in the dental yeah, team sure, sure. but i always tell for example my italian friends they have they have one assistant who makes the coffee one who makes the kitchen one who makes so they have much more people but but in italy but in italy they they get uh, 20 percent of what, yeah, yeah. what you get in switzerland or what you yeah. get in germany as a dental assistant so yeah. the structure is different and in america you have the office manager and i, I like the concept of the office manager who who who's doing all the not nice discussion with the patient yeah. about yeah. payments about cost cost plans and and whatever so this is uh, this is a different structure yeah. that, uh, yeah. that i think is interesting and in in europe the dentist is in in many in many offices the dentist has to play all the roles yeah be, yeah, be the, be the, yeah. Be, huh? yeah but the dentists are yeah in, in general they are not good businessmen i mean okay you know where where is what is the what what is the part where the dentist makes the money if he's sitting on the chair in the chair treating a patient and not carry the care about the sterilization uh, apparatus or whatever no on the chair okay so he must be able to delegate some parts okay a praxis uh, a clinic manager is for sure a good idea for sure you know if you are clever you know where you make your money you make the money on the chair keep working on the chair and you make money but it's not all the the, the point of 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 uh, of the money 
I think we have to talk again, very important for the future vision. What can we do to protect ourselves, ourselves from, and I have to say that from the industry side, because the industry will, they will do what they want with us. Yeah? As long as we follow them completely. Yeah? For example, I think we have in Germany so many milling machines, we can mill the whole world. Nobody needs so many, uh, plenty of milling machines. This is, uh, but they have a good marketing. They sell it to every lab and you know, everybody is buying this machine. Yeah. This so just, uh, just 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 a quick uh, quick yeah. thing. This is this is an interesting question from Leon. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is the ongoing discussion. So I think dentists are part of the health care industry. Yeah. So our first our first thing is take care of our patients. So if a patient mm -hmm. has pain, so I know there's also the rule if if a patient comes into your office and has a, a serious health mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. you have to treat him that's mm -hmm. that's 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 hippocrates you know we uh, we are that's also it. doctors yeah. so yeah. this is for sure this is the first thing that we have to take care about our patients but there's another level so there's mm -hmm. the level and you see it also in 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 all medical fields mm -hmm. so a doctor is a doctor but it's always thumped something on top of just being a doctor. So that's but true. this should always, and I agree with Leon completely, this should be also always be in our mind, back in mm -hmm. our brain, that mm -hmm. the first thing is that we want the best for our patients and we are not thinking about making money or taking money out of the patient. So, but this is then a good diagnosis Mm -hmm. A serious treatment plan, a mm -hmm. good discussion, and and uh, Leon, I'm going back and say, okay, you should practice evidence-based dentistry, where mm -hmm. we have the our knowledge, our skills, the literature, and the patient. The patient mm -hmm. plays an important role in evidence-based dentistry and evi evidence-based medicine. So. Th this is uh, the answer to the question that if we are working in in what we have learned or what we should do and perform, so we 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 are surely in the health industry on the first first sight, and then but on top of this, we are all also professional. We have we have a small uh, a small a small in, a small uh, company. Mm -hmm. We have our employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have we have uh, we have to pay our loans and we have to pay sure. our salaries and everything. Oh. So we are not only doctors. We are also small a small a small company a small business, and we have to try to bring all these puzzle pieces together to get yes. the best for the patient, but at the end of the day, also being able to uh, to, to to feed our families. I don't, yes. I don't want to be dramatic. Also, we, are not social, but, uh, we, are not, we are not a social station. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, for, for, yeah but for the young, for the young colleagues out there, the average income of dentists is going down. I know. For, since let's say since the seven, end of the 70s, beginning 80s, where there was a peak of the income of dentists worldwide. Since know. then, the average income is going down. And, uh, and so I think, I think you need passion if you really want to make money. <laughs> Dentist, dentistry is not the job to select. If, no. you really, if your primary goal <laughs> is to become rich there are other professions yeah, you have to go into something else so, yeah. so that's why being being a doctor having passion for what you're doing these mm -hmm. are the key elements these are the key elements for for being successful but but you also need somebody who takes a look at your budget who 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 coaches you because a lot of dental offices these days are really struggling are really struggling because they are working all day but at the end it's not 
enough money that uh, remains so uh, so this is this is a, this is a, a serious problem of a lot of dental uh, offices and maybe also i don't know if it's in the dental lab the same but the sorry yes it's a different situation to the laboratory but this is also from the history that belongs to to speak open i mean i speak open now but this is the reality I know so many colleagues, they have, they have let's say, uh, five, six, seven uh, dentists as a, as a client, and they work for the monthly invoice sometimes for six months to be paid. I, I don't know how they do that because it's not, you know, this is on the positive side, but it's not on the bank. Yeah? So, this is the reality, I must say. It's getting better, maybe, yeah. But still, this because also what the dentists see, they see also we have to do something. We have to do something because the average of the income is going down. Oh, okay. So we have to think about what can we do for the future about education. How can we uh, how can we present ourselves in a better way? Uh, okay, so do we make units, 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 units cheap with machines, production in China or wherever? I don't know. Or do we do high quality huh? with uh, investing time and a higher price? This can be also a concept. You have to find. Away, there is nothing really in between now. I mean, yeah, but so this is I'm also this is also how the the structure of our patients is developing. So uh, coming back, I can I can judge it from what I see in Switzerland. So mm -hmm. we have, uh, I think, health or paying for health is still something important, and I see it mm -hmm. now in the Corona crisis. Mm -hmm. I think I think. Uh, we have less patients coming to the dental hygienist for the recall, mm -hmm. but I see more larger reconstructions being mm -hmm. done in this time because people think, okay, if 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 times get even worse, I at least I want now. I want I want to be healthy, and it's yeah. not only the teeth. So yeah. Yeah. people yeah. are now paying more attention on being healthy because. It, it's it's no sense if if you're ill uh, in 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 a crisis. No, no, no. It's it's, I, it's I, the I, worst I combination. So this is so I think people are aware that health is a very precious okay. good and is okay. important for them. And but again, coming back, if you say I want to be someone who's doing less work, take more time for the patient, and try to make reach even a better level of quality, mm -hmm. also choosing a, a, a better lab that does three try-ins and uh, taking more time. So, so this is also for a, a special clientele, so different patients. Mm -hmm. But I think the mass market, but don't I don't want the mass market to be the cheap market. We should yeah, okay, also yeah, okay. in this in this so also in the so-called uh, market for yeah, yeah. for everybody, I think we should try to reach a certain level of quality, and this yeah. level of quality, from my point of view, can be reached using digital technologies, machines, mm -hmm. and uh, and and again. So what we discussed in the beginning. The last time I really heard somebody giving me a vision where mm -hmm. dentistry could go was Professor mm -hmm. Merman in the 80s mm -hmm. when I was a student in Zurich and he presented with really passion mm -hmm. this new idea of the machine doing the restorations with mm -hmm. the dentist and the combination to be beneficial for the patient being one, one visit dentistry make it more efficient, make it cheaper, make it more uh, affordable for a larger or a majority of, of people out there. But uh, 30 years later, only two or 3% of the dentists have a scanner 
in their office. So, um, so this brings me back to the to the to a question I highlighted. For me, it looks that the dental profession seems relatively resistant to new developments. So, how do you see that from a yeah, from, I see, I see this from in, a uh, addition view? Especially in Germany, it's the way it is. For example, with all the, let's say, for example, this, these all on four structures, I think all over the world, it's a bigger market in all on fours. Uh, if I see this in Germany, very less here, very less. Because, and this is one positive thing on that side, because the, uh, the dentists, maybe it's in Switzerland the same, I don't know. They are very critical before they start to to get into it something new, maybe. Okay, so I, they need statistics. They need uh, uh, you know forensic from the uh, universities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is nice, okay, and as well what they don't have, maybe they don't have if, um, in the back office a lab which can do a perfect planning because they feel helpless, I mean, okay? And this is also a benefit what we have in the future. If we are good trained, if we are having good education for ourselves, we can be a really a partner to the dentist side from our technical side and partner for the future to create or to discuss or plan this backward planning things uh, to create a better and secure cases for our patients. Yeah, this can be a really a, one path, a positive path for the future. And this is what I, you know, because I had a bigger lab with 10 employees in the past, now I'm alone. And what I see, because reducing all that, this is what my, my clients, they love this because I know everything. I know the model. I know, you know, every margin. I know every fissure and they know exactly if they call what is with this case. You know what I mean? So we pair this together from A to Z. No, this is a, this is a development we see also in the dental fields. Yeah. So uh, the really huge dental clinics are not really growing. No. It's interesting. So maybe uh, 20 years ago, everybody was saying the future will be dental clinics with 50, 100, 200 dentists and what. Uh, but, but it seems that uh, the patients don't really want that. So patients mm -hmm. prefer, mm -hmm. prefer individual mm -hmm. treatment, personalized mm -hmm. treatment mm -hmm. and coming back because dentistry is something very intimate. That's I, I, it's on my tongue. And uh, I, I, and uh, tongue. and uh, I tell people if you go on the street and ask somebody, show me your teeth. Mm -hmm. It's they will a lot of lot of them would not do that. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. pull down your yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull down your trousers. So it's very intimate, and yeah. for that uh, they also want somebody they are confident with. To take care of this, yeah, sure, sure, and that's why I think uh, the the small or middle, not big, dental clinics or labs, big labs can be something because they are not connected directly to the patient yeah. and can be efficient, like these huge labs in China with two thousand lab technicians. They can be more efficient and offer uh, cost-effective yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, treatments, but they are not connected directly to the patient. But in the oh. dental in the dental office, I think this, the small and beautiful and small and very personal style of dentistry has a clear uh, future. And mm -hmm. uh, also in all the discussion I had with, uh, with, with younger dentists and very successful dentists, I see that they have in in the average they have very small offices mm -hmm. they are doing only one two three patients a day mm -hmm. and dedicate a lot of time and might also be a little bit higher priced but mm -hmm. they have their patients mm -hmm. that 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 are looking for these special services so in in this direction this is interesting what you said in this direction don't you think that 
because this is a dentist side. Of course, you're a dentist, you talk about the dentist side. You are on the secure side, so so, because you have to put your finger in the mouth, okay? We as a dental technician, we are out of that. You Because you decide if you send the file to somewhere or you send it to the lab, huh? okay? Which you can trust, okay? So if, if we, you know, talking about this, higher quality direction because of many uh, subjects. Uh, don't you think that the laboratory side, uh, it, it's now time to, to, to allow them official to work with a patient? Because officially we are not allowed to bring the finger over the lip. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this this is interesting. This is very interesting because uh, the 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 thing is, this is a rule, and I think this is an international rule that the lab oh. technician is not allowed to put the finger in the mouth, yeah. but they are doing it. Yeah. and uh, and uh, and no nobody way. nobody sued any lab technician for two reasons. Because if you put the finger in the mouth of the patient, what happens? nothing and and at the end at the end i think it's the dentist asking you jan please do the trying of the crown because it saves me time yeah, yeah, it yeah. saves me money makes yeah, yeah. the workflow more efficient but i agree with you that this is something nobody dared so far to start the discussion but the discussion is not started if there's a rule Nobody I, follows, I and there's no, and there's no, ago. and there's no judge. No, no, doing I something. Fifteen years ago, fifteen years or even more years ago, I, I told this also on stage. I'm not the only one. Uh, there are some colleagues that did it as well, because everybody is not, Everybody knows with the high quality, all the technicians are working in the mouth of the patient. This is no, no, no question about that. Yeah, uh, it's a must. So, but still we are on, and from the law side, it's critical. I mean, okay, you never know. You no, never know. It's, not, it's, not, it's not critical, it's prohibited. Yeah, or, for, or whatever. Yeah, so I, I know the same, same can happen also to a dentist if you are in a, a different other country where it's not allowed. I know also a colleague from US doing something in Australia and uh, they advise him, okay, you have to pay 20,000. You are not allowed to do that, my friend. Uh, he's a dentist. Well, no. Anyhow, so but I think we it's important to start this discussion because this is also a niche for us. I mean, as, as a group, I mean, I see as a team, if I talk about a team, I don't know really so many teams. I mean, real teams. This is almost still the same situation like I... Like on the congresses, there is the group of the dentists sitting together, and there there is the group of the technicians sitting together. You know, this is always the same. Or congresses where both come together are, you know, very unique. And it's not, you know, it's getting better for sure. It's getting better because the interest is more and the pressure is more on the side to get how can we create a much, much better result to show this. Okay. So I think we have to discuss these things as well, because this is the power what we have. If we fuse this together as, you know, dentists and technician side and lab side, we have a power together what, what different parts somewhere else can't, cannot do. Uh, that is also a big chance, I, th I think, in the future. Yeah? The question is, when do you start to do that? If you start today, I mean, it takes you maybe five or ten years to get to this point that this is fluently working perfect. Yeah, but I tell I tell you one thing: if if you would start the initiative to say, okay, we want now legally mm -hmm. uh, make this, or we we want to make it legal that the dental technician is putting his hands in the patient mouth, there will be a huge opposition. Ah, from sure. the dentist side, a huge opposition, because there's still a clear separation mm -hmm. 
and uh, and and this is a discussion that 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 needs to be this is uh, yeah because we we discussed it for several years now and i think the solution the solution is not is not so easy oh. because because the 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 thing started when i told you when when the golden years of dentistry yeah. were yeah. also the golden years of lab technicians sure and wow. this was the time, this was the time when a lot of dental technicians tried to put themselves on the same oh. level of like, I'm, 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 the lab, the lab fee was more than the dental fee. I remember when I was young, the lab fee of a lot of work we did yeah. in, in the office I worked, the lab fee, what the, the, it was 20,000 lab fee, 10,000 dental oh, fee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and, and 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 so the also on the econ economical side the the dental technician was much more important than it is now and and i think we should see dentists and lab technician as a team partners but but somebody is the head of the team and the head of the team has to be the dentist who has the connection to the patient and gets the people involved, the specialists involved to solve the problem. And one of the specialists is also the lab technician. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I see all on the same level, but the dentist is the leader, the team leader. And I, I, I appreciate you and all other lab technicians. I know, I know, I know. I want to tell you and the other lab technicians that somebody has to be the team leader. And in the dental environment, I think the role of team leader has to be performed by the dentist. And that's why I'm coming back. I understand. A good, a good team leader, a good dentist asks the lab technician and wants to know more about your work because I can only be a good team leader if I know what the members of the team are doing. Sure. If I don't know, then there will be all, always like I'm, I'm watching down on all my team members and seeing them as inferior to myself. And this should not be. And but no, this no, is I a, agree with that. But this is a discussion that is not so easy to do no, because I, I see. I want to bring this into this discussion, what because this is an important point to think about. It, yeah. Okay. Because okay, I have the hat on for my work, what I give outside of my door here to the lab, uh, to the dentist, to the patient. Of course, the dentist has the hat on. Because if some problems coming after, he is injured and not the lab. So he has to take care of it. You know, he, he make a contract with the patient. I understand this 100%. But there is a reason that a uh, uh, dentist is working also with a special lab because they trust each other and this is very important. Yeah. But this is again, this is a big benefit. You have this, I have this with my partners. Uh, this is a big benefit big, back to the point of where is the future, you know? So if, if, you, if a lot of clinics working with intraoral cameras, there is still the question, where is the file going on after? Who received this file? And that, of course, I'm a little bit afraid about that. Yeah? But if, if the laboratory side is, you know, getting less and less and less and less because there are, you know, machines doing this and blah, 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 the next step will be that the industry will tell you, no, you have to sell this crown for 12 euro. No, no, I, I, I exactly know what, what you want to say. And I think we have now 55 minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I, I, I always, I could, I could talk for hours with you. It's sure. very interesting, but I think, I, I think we will stop here. Sure. And, sure. Um, and, uh, and with the, with the really, 
highlight a thing that there need to be more discussion about the mm -hmm. role of the lab technician in the whole team. Uh, mm -hmm. There's, I, I know if, if a group of dentists are talking, they talk different. Sure. If they are together with lab technicians, a group of lab technicians talks different if there's no dentist around. But at the end, I think we, we, are, we are a team. Mm -hmm. we, have, we, we all suffer the, 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 the pressure of first industry, of technology, of patients with less economical power. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. have to be we have yeah. to be more efficient in the future. But I think um, this is a discussion that we have to continue. I'm uh, I, I told you in the beginning, I'm now planning also to have interviews with CEOs of the dental mm -hmm. industry. Okay. And I want to see or want to hear what they are saying, <laughs> what the future of yeah. dentistry is from the side of the industry so yeah. Uh, yeah. i feel also a little bit that we get dictated so mm -hmm. uh, if you ask ah is this material still available no no it was replaced by another one yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, now you have to use this material so there will be some changes in the future yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. but uh jan i want to really thank you for for your time for, you. uh, for, being, for being my guest and uh, i will i will leave to you, the last, the last words to our audience. Uh, yeah, no, it, was, it was a pleasure. I don't know how many people was watching, you know, because okay, maybe for lots of people in this area of dentist side, I'm not so familiar. But I think it's good. It's a good start to talk about or to to give some ideas to think about. I mean, okay, not to get every stuff feed it. What you what they present to you. Think about what is the benefit really for me or for our patients. And at least, last but not least, it starts with the passion inside. Or and if you have the passion, you you always decide the best for your patients. And this is what we're working for. That's Absolutely. all. What I want to say. And and this is also the idea, the concept of this uh, series of light, life interviews to create discussion, to promote discussion. Maybe now we are not so big. We we have um, we have some, we have people watching on Facebook. The YouTube group is growing slowly, but mm -hmm. I think if we continue, this is a format. Uh, I'm convinced that being interesting. And uh, and also changing changing people having different insights and I really loved the insight from from your side being Thank a lab. You very much. So um, I I still my I still have a lot of respect for 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 lab technicians and their work. But uh, the the cooperation our collaboration needs to be rethought uh, redefined, yeah. especially with new technologies coming up and uh, having a having a, a larger impact let's say on uh, on what we are doing so i'm really looking forward jan we will for sure yeah. hear, hear from each other and maybe meet again uh, in a few months for I another so. I so. Why not? That's why Why I not? Say, thank you very much <laughs> i will have my glass of wine now and so so take care everybody stay safe I uh, hope you get uh, vaccinated. Uh, we all hope to get back to normal, whatever normal means. And uh, wishing you all a, a good week, a great week. And you can watch this video always later on Facebook and YouTube and uh, add also your comments. We are open and we are here also to answer your questions later. So stay Thank tuned and stay safe. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.